Mr. Rickers, thanks for joining me today. Nice to be here, Vicki. I'd like to start off with getting your reaction to the budget. Well, Vicki, the whole issue about this budget for us and the Liberal Party is the whole issue of trust. And uh, it is our understanding right now that the people of New Brunswick, in particular the medical community in uh, affected areas where there are planned health care cuts were going to be implemented, have lost trust in this government. So as a starting point, uh, we, uh, the Liberal Party, do not have trust in the Premier nor his government. So that is why we will be voting against this budget. The budget itself has a number of excellent items that we think are very positive um, in use, use of um, nurse practitioners, uh, increased services with the ambulance service and advanced paramedics. We think those are all wonderful, wonderful uh, initiatives. Mm -hmm. Initiatives by pharmacists to, re to be able to increase their scope of work to reduce wait times. We think that, for example, is another great, great initiative. But the difficulty we have is last year, the, uh, the last year's budget, this government promised no cuts to health care in the communities that saw on February 11th mm -hmm. their facilities, emergency rooms, and their acute beds in their hospital were going to be closed. This, when they were told uh, last year that there would be no, no cuts to service. So for this community, for example, St. Stephen, you have a very viable, uh, important community hospital. Do we trust do we trust Premier Hikes to continue to keep this facility open in your community? The answer is no, and we base that on his actions, what he did last year. Um, and then when the facilities closed, we got different responses. We were told by Premier Higgs that the reason that he was going to put these cuts to services on hold was that important questions weren't asked. There were gaps that could not be filled uh, to justify the, uh, the plan itself. But then two weeks later, we learned at an editorial board in St. John that Premier Higgs and Minister Fleming openly discussed that after uh, the initial uh, concerns expressed by the communities, they actually did a political headcount. And once they realized they would not have the votes necessary to survive um, to implement this ban, it's only then that they put the... So we've been told two very, very different stories, which all comes back to this whole issue of trust. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, as long as well as the affected communities, uh, uh, such as Sackville, uh, Sussex, Perth Andover, Grand Falls, Karaket, Kent uh, North, uh, all of these areas uh, and the practitioners uh, and doctors I've, I've talked to doctors in each of these communities and they have told me face to face that should these cuts have had taken place, our citizens' lives would have been placed in danger. So this has been a tremendous and remarkable uh, lack of confidence, a lack of, uh, of credibility that we have uh, in this government. Mm -hmm. I know Higgs has said that he plans to travel around the province in April, May before the upcoming by-election um, to hear from people about their concerns for health care. Do you think that's just an immediate reaction to the health care reform fallout um, and is it too little too late? Well this is again goes down to our issue of trust, uh, Vicky. Minister Fleming has said publicly over and over again there's been enough consultation there's only one plan, and it's only due to the people of New Brunswick being too emotional and entrenched that they can't accept the ways of this government that they, they had planned. Yesterday's budget, we feel, is going to be the cornerstone, cornerstone of further cuts to the... We know from Horizon and Vitality, the CEO said there's going to be a phase two and a phase three to this plan. And we've not heard a single word. And even today, in question period, in Friday, and I was present, and the questions were, were, were asked, when will the people of New Brunswick see the plan of service reductions in phase two and phase three? And again, no response from the government. And this all comes back to trust. Mm -hmm. 
And we, the Liberal Party, as, as well as we believe thousands of New Brunswickers and the medical community do not trust this government. You're hoping that the Liberals have a united front in voting down the budget, but MLA Jerry Lowe still might vote for it. Um, do you think that is likely to happen? Jerry has a decision to make. He's uh, publicly commented. He hasn't uh, made up his mind, and I understand earlier today that he is still mulling things over. Uh, we, and I as leader, encourage him to consider um, uh, very seriously his options to go back to that question of trust. Does he trust Blaine Higgs or does he trust Kevin Vickers? Um, and uh, make, make the decision. You know, I'm thinking upon second sober thought, as they say in the Senate, that Jerry will vote for us, and I'm hoping uh, that that will be the case, that he will support us in expressing uh, unanimity across the, the party that we have no trust in this government. People's Alliance has said they will support it. So a lot of people are assuming it comes down to what the Greens think. Um, David Kuhn put forth some ideas today, some motions that he would like to see taken care of before they vote. Um, do you think the Greens at this point um, will be voting in favor of the budget? Well, I, 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 I think it would be very sad for the Green Party or to, for the people in New Brunswick who believe in the Green Party and their values to see uh, Mr. Kuhn prop up this government as Chris Austin and the members of the People's Alliance have. Um, I'm hoping Mr. Kuhn realizes uh, the better of the ways not to prop up this government as Chris Austin has been doing uh, since the government has, has come to uh, fruition. Uh, the other thing I would ask Mr. Kuhn's to reflect that two of these proposed hospitals, in one in Kent North and one in Sackville, are hospitals that his present MLAs are, are occupying. Uh, we have Kevin Arsenault in Kent North and we have Megan Mitten uh, in uh, Sackville, Tantamar, Memram Cook. Um, so they have openly, publicly stated that they will do everything possible to ensure that the services at their hospitals will stay open. And uh, uh, propping up this government uh, based on their record, based on, for example, what they told us last year, that there would be no cuts to service, mm -hmm. I do not see how Mr. Kuhn nor his party members can trust this government. Elections cost money, and there are concerns from New Brunswickers who might not even support the Higgs government that they don't want to see a change at this point in time just because of the cost and the stress that it has. Um, what do you have to say to those voters? We, you know, I can completely understand and, and empathize with uh, people in New Brunswick. We had an election in 2018. Uh, we have the municipal elections coming up. Uh, we have concerns about the coronavirus and how that's going to play out. Financial markets are in disarray. This is a very troubling and difficult time that I, that I foresee uh, for, for the problem. And I completely understand why New Brunswickers feel this way at this time. Mm -hmm. However, as leader of the Liberal Party, uh, we're the official opposition. We have a duty to ensure the safety and security of our citizens. Mm -hmm. We have a duty to ensure the safety and security of our citizens. And based on what has transpired in the last few months, the different stories that we have been told, we <coughs> feel our duty compels us to do whatever in our power to ensure the safety, health and safety of New Brunswickers by bringing this government down. Um, you're in the St. Croix riding today. Can you tell me a little bit about what you've been doing in this area? Well, we had a lovely meeting uh, today. Um, uh, first and foremost, we met with the uh, health committee um, uh, here at the uh, local community hospital. Um, i learning, uh, I guess I'm re-establishing things from my past, how important decisions affecting communities can be resolved at the local level, community-based. I, I was a police officer, so we used to call it community-based policing. But what I learned today at, with, the, with the health and with the, with the local mayors of St. Andrews and, and St. Stephen, centralization into two big areas, like you know, centralization in St. John, centralization in Fredericton, centralization in Moncton, on the face of it, Common sense would probably tell you, you know what, this would be the smartest thing to do. Let's put everything in one area and people use that as a hub. Mm -hmm. But what I've received today, both from the health committee and the mayors, 
how many existing practices have been in place that actually save taxpayers money, mm -hmm. that actually better the health system in a much cheaper way. Let me give you an example. When people go into St. John for an operation and they're recuperating in an acute bed, well, we know that if they're allowed to go home to St. Stephen and, and finish out their hospital stay in St. Stephen, mm -hmm. the recovery time is always much quicker, mm -hmm. thereby saving money and saving resources. Sackville, for example, does a thousand day surgeries every year. Little Sackville Hospital, a thousand day surgeries every year. This enhances and reduces the incredible backlog at our major centers. Mm -hmm. And I guess that is another really big, big concern. We do not feel that there was anywhere near sufficient planning and analysis done as to how it's going to affect. And so far, as this concern and public con debate has moved along, people in the big cities do not realize uh, or seem uh, to have an understanding that there's going to be phase two, there's going to be phase three, and already their hospitals are bursting at the seam. Mm -hmm. So surely there could be better models with community-based consultation, listening to the medical people that as I have today, mm -hmm listening to your mayor here in St. Stephen, as well as the mayor of St. Andrew, that we can come up with community-based solutions mm -hmm. that are gonna fill the needs of the citizens of Charlotte County, St. Andrew, St. Croix, and address it in a much more effective and efficient way. I believe people at the ground, community-based, uh, would be the, and you know, as far as people have said, well, what would you do? What, do you have a health plan? Well, my health plan is, certainly going to be based in three areas and mm -hmm. that first area is critical. Community-based solutions, consulting, consultation at the ground level, identifying exactly what the requirements are to keep people safe here and then once we have done that then we'll see how we can uh, develop and deliver service that enhances uh, the youth of both the use and um, of both our community hospitals at the local level as well as well as our, our regional regional hospitals. The health reform fallout came at an interesting time in the world with the coronavirus pandemic. Do you think the one silver lining maybe to that is that it will make us rethink health care and especially I'm, people I'm, in rural communities? I'm sure it will. I'm sure that it will. And uh, you know the you know, obviously analysis have to be done. We have a wonderful and blessed with a talented uh, medical health officer here, Dr. Jennifer Russell, who has an exceptional team. And uh, this is another concern that I've had in the last few days where we see the Minister of Education out front uh, giving direction that's not aligned with our public health direction. So I'm encouraging, uh, and, and actually in a phone call yesterday with, with uh, the, the Premier to r rely and have uh, Dr. Russell out there at least being with politicians um, who have no expertise in this in this this field because I think the citizens of New Brunswick want to have confidence they want to be put at ease they want to be assured that everything that can be done is being done and I believe wholeheartedly that that's best done by people um, who are trained who have the competencies and the skill sets just like Dr. Jennifer Russell and her team Finally, um, there's an important by-election coming up in this riding. Um, why do you believe Karen Ludwig is the right candidate for the Liberals? When I first met Karen, the thing that struck me instantly was her values, honesty, integrity, professionalism. And then I soon learned by speaking with uh, stakeholders in the community that if she is passionate about the concerns of the people of, of, of this area. And I can tell you something, I know as Premier, if I ever suggest a hospital in St. Stephen be reduced or closed, I'm going to have one hell of a fight on my hands. So I'm, I'm convinced uh, just her passion, her drive, most importantly, Karen's values will carry her through to victory. Finally, if it comes down to it, are you willing to pull the speaker in order to get the votes you need to vote down the budget. You know, I've uh, repeated publicly over and over again, we are going to do whatever it takes to defeat this government. Um, there's moving pieces here, as you just mentioned, uh, how are the Greens going to vote? 
the public alliance now have, uh, People's Alliance have now stated publicly that they're, but as this all unfolds, uh, there's a beautiful expression in French, au moment, au moment propice, at the very right moment, uh, we'll, d we'll decide when we, when we uh, ask the speaker to come and join us. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you very much. A news and public affairs production of CHCO-TV, New Brunswick's only source for independent community television.